Hello everyone and welcome back to Lewis Fiction. What if Vulture had won in Spider-Man Homecoming? It's a very interesting question on what could have been the outcome if this had happened. Well, that's what I'm going to explore in today's video. But before I do get into that, if you are new around here, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more What If Fan Fictions in the future. And also make sure to suggest some in the comment section down below that you'd also like to see. With that out of the way, let's get straight into it. We begin our story during the final battle of Spider-Man Homecoming. Peter is on the ship that had just departed from Stark Tower, and he is trying to stop Vulture from stealing everything from in it. However, during the fight with the Vulture, Peter is sent flying off the ship. He will try and attach his web to the side of the jet to hang on. However, he misses, falling down. Vulture manages to get away. Peter panics at first, realizing that the Stark suit isn't at his disposable at this moment in time. Peter creates a clever way to land safely, using his webs to create a parachute, representing his intelligence. But he's lost, and he watches on as the vulture escapes into the night. This isn't good for Peter. He had to win that fight, with everything on the line. His reputation with Stark, the goodwill of the people, and most importantly, everyone that he loves. Will Vulture fulfill his promise? We'll have to find out. Peter will be upset with himself, but the first person he'll go to after this loss is to Aunt May. Battered, bruised, and injured, Peter will panickingly arrive back at his flat, thinking of that moment where Vulture said that he'd kill everyone he loves. Aunt May will ask what is going on, as he was meant to be at a homecoming dance with Liz. Peter says that she's got to get out of here, there's a dangerous man looking for them, and something bad could happen. May freaks out, almost lashing out at Peter, asking what the hell is going on, saying to Peter that he's freakishly secretive ever since he got that Stark internship, and she just wants him to be honest with her. Peter stares at her with a blank expression and realizes how much he's hurting her. Tears stream down Aunt May's face as she looks back at him. Peter nudges back slightly and holds his face down. He says he can't tell her, but all he can say is that she needs to go somewhere safe. May said she's had enough of whatever this is. She says after everything her and Ben did for him, all the trust that they put into him, and he would just betray it, just like that. Teary-eyed and quivered voice, May says that hurts and then walks away from him, out of the door, to an unknown location. Peter's mouth trembles, his eyes bloodshot, and his arms slightly numb from the fight previous. We cut to Adrian Toomes, who drops the goods off at the Tinkerer's base. All the stuff they took from Stark Tower is now being used by the Vulture and developed by the Tinkerer to create better weapons and technology. Adrian says that they're going to be rich. The Tinkerer asks Adrian if he's actually going to go after the kid's family, and Adrian says no. It was only a fear factor. He would never do anything like that, especially since he has a family himself. He knows how much family is valued to him. But the longer that he is left alive, the more chance that someone like Tony Stark or the Avengers find out what they're really doing. At this point in the story, Adrian and the Tinkerer don't realize that they're on Stark's radar, not just yet. But they both believe, especially Adrian, that stopping Spider-Man, aka Peter Parker, is the key to not being caught by Stark. So Adrian says, that he's gonna go and take him out. We cut back to Peter's flat. He sits with his back against the wall, with all the lights turned out. He's trying to contact Tony Stark, or Happy Hogan, anyone that can help him, so he can explain the situation to them. But no one will answer. No one will even call him back. He's trying to tell them about the stolen goods, but no one will take him seriously. The whole film, up until this point, Peter has never been taken seriously. That's when Peter realizes that no matter what, even with the highest stakes of May's life on the line, he has to take out the Vulture himself. But before Peter can act upon anything, the light bulb above him shakes. This portion of the What If will have very big horror elements to it. Peter's spider sense hadn't homed in completely at this point. Even so, the Vulture will appear out of nowhere, jump scaring Peter and the audience. They will engage in battle, and this fight will be brutal, and I imagine it being similar to the condo fight in Spider-Man No Way Home. This fight will be more personal between the two than the last, with Vulture trying his best to hurt Peter. He will tell Peter the whole time that this isn't what he wanted. He could have stepped down, but he didn't listen. The fight rages on between the two of them. And for narrative purposes, Peter will obviously come out on top, managing to beat the Vulture in the end. I reckon for the rest of the film from here on out, it would have played out generally the same as it did in the original Spider-Man Homecoming, apart from everything that boiled over with Aunt May. So that's where we will get one final scene of this version of the story, where Peter will eventually go looking for her. He arrives at the cemetery. The camera movements are slow, lethargic, and monotone. The colors are blue and desaturated, and turned her back away from Peter, 
was Aunt May standing in front of Uncle Ben's grave. She was exactly where he thought she would be. It is said that Ben didn't mean that much to Peter in this universe, but as Homecoming explicitly set up during the film, he meant a lot to May. Peter puts his hand on her shoulder as she cries, saying that she misses him. She doesn't want Peter, who is practically her son, to suffer the same fate. And Peter will say that's why he has to tell her. She turns around, and Peter will be honest with her, and will tell her that he is Spider-Man. And that is where we end this What If story. I believe that some people will disagree with this section, but I also do think that this ending is a nice substitute to what we got already. And it also does tie really nicely into Spider-Man Far From Home as well. I also think that this version of Peter letting into that honesty with May really does round off their story during this film as well. The deterioration of their relationship throughout the film and this What If story as well is all built on trust and how that crumbles during the story. So this will be the payoff, this will be the resolution, and this will be the ending. But thank you very much for watching this What If. If you did enjoy, make sure to like on it and also make sure to subscribe. If you are new, make sure to comment down below what do you think about this What If. Do you think anything would have happened differently or what would your take be on this What If as well? I want to know all of your thoughts. Also, make sure to give me suggestions down below in the comments to what you would like to see next. Thank you very much and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care and peace.